Jesus. Jesus. What a wonderful night. Nehemiah chapter 2. Chapter 2 of the book of Nehemiah. From verse number 6. And the king said unto me, the queen also sitting by him, for how long shall thy journey be? And when wilt thou return? So it pleased the king to send me, and I set him a time. Verse 7, Moreover I said unto the king, If it please the king, let letters be given me to the governors beyond the river, that they may convey me over till I come into Judah. And a letter unto Asaph, the keeper of the king's forest, that he may give me timber to make beams for the gates of the palace, which appertaineth to the house, and for the wall of the city, and for the house that I shall enter into. And the king granted me according to the good hand of my God upon me. You may be seated. I want you to take note of something here. The last verse that we read. ends up by saying every request that I submitted before the king it was granted because of the good hand of God that was upon me which means upon the life of Nehemiah there was the hand of God the hand of God upon his life was there to support him, to back him up, to empower him, even to energize him. There is completely nothing that you can do in this life, even in another life after this one, without the help from the hand of God. You need the hand of God upon your life. Having good plans, it is very necessary. Having better strategies, it is very important. But above it all, when everything has been said and done, the hand of God is a requirement. You need the hand of God upon your life. So now, tonight, I'm going to talk about the, uh, one of the most important factors. Okay. We are dealing with strategies on how to get your mission, how to get your vision accomplished. And we're talking about a lot of things uh, during our Tuesday services. And one of the things that I promised that I would talk about was the time factor the time factor the time factor still under construction still under the housing projects we need to talk about time and to find out how time affects you either in a positive or in a negative way is there time involved in what you are doing. What is the importance, what is the significance of time? Is it important 
to be talking about time when you want to get into a building project. Time. 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 I will, I will say out something here which most of you probably would find very uh, heavy because it will seem to be like an attack on the previous sermons that you might have had. But I have to establish this thing. I have to push it so that you understand where I'm coming from. The time factor. The time factor. Now, there are people that when you look at their business proposals, it is very lucrative, very attractive, and very impressive. They know everything that is needed to come up with a proposal, to come up with a business plan. But there is one thing that you see missing in most of those plans. It is the time aspect. Most people, they put everything into place except time. Time. You don't find time. I will repeat. They put everything into order. They write everything. They do every research that is needed. But if you look at their plan, there is no time involved. They don't give themselves time. And there is something that happens when you don't put time to the plans that you, that, you, that you have. We have read the scripture here. Nehemiah is a man on a mission. He's about to embark on a very serious project. He's ready to construct not just a two-bedroom house, but he wants to build the entire city of Jerusalem which is broken down, not just the city, but also the walls. That includes the gates. But when he explained his mission, his vision to the king, after prayer and fasting, and the king was ready to agree and to allow him to go, but there was one demand from the king. The king said, I'm going to allow you to go because of course there is the hand of God upon your life. I cannot resist. I cannot deny you the opportunity to go. But one thing that you have to tell me now, you are going to be doing that for how many days? I want you to give me time. Apart from what you are going to be building, how you are going to be doing it, I need to understand, give me time before I can allow you to go. So that becomes a principle. Before the king can release you and allow you to go, time has to come into play. He needs to understand. How long is it going to take you to build your own house? If there is no time involved, the king will not allow you to go. Even the devil himself, he will not allow you to build. Even God himself, he will not support you. You need to have time attached to the project. For how long are you going to be there? When should I expect you back, Nehemiah? You know, this is something that just came up. You have prayed about it. I can feel prayer. You have fasted about it. I know that. But I'm not going to allow you to go unless you tell me for how long is it going to take you before you can complete that project. So time is very important. Make plans. Go ahead. But please make sure after working out everything, give yourself time. If that project has to be accomplished within five years, at least it has to be written five years. Okay? Are we together? 
Don't leave that space blank. There has to be time. But in talking about time, I want to say something very important here. They spoke, Nehemiah and the king, they spoke about time. Number one. Number two, then Nehemiah said, I've given you time. I'm going to be there for so many years, so many months, so many weeks. I'm going to be there working on the project. And then the king said, okay, I'll allow you to go. And then he said, but for me to be able to stick to the time that I've given you, I need something else. Because there is something that normally delays people even after setting up time. You say two years and you go for 10 years. You say 10 years and you go for 20 years. There is a hindrance, there is an enemy that fights against time. So Nehemiah said, for me to stick to the time that I've given you, I've got another request. In fact, two requests. Number one, I need a letter. Write me a letter that I would present to the kings that are beyond the river. That letter, it is so that they would allow me to pass. Which means they are delaying principalities that are on the way. Before you can start working on any project, they are kings beyond the river. going to face a very serious resistance. Let me have a letter. If you want me to be back in the next two years, let me have a letter for that safe passage. Isn't it amazing? Just look at that. Isn't it amazing? It's already not everything that you are going through now and the people that are delaying you and fighting you and stopping your papers from coming out and so on. It is already known in the Bible there are kings beyond the river. Before you can finally arrive at your stand, you have to pass through principalities. Tonight, a prophetic letter is given to you in Jesus' name. You shall have safe passage. He said, he said, let me have a letter. So they could allow me to pass. <laughs> so the two years that I've given to the king, I, I would even spend them at the river if, I'm, if I don't have a letter. I need an authoritative letter. Let me have another piece of paper with your writing there. Put your signature there. So that when I arrive, they will open up the doors for me. Let me pass. Don't delay me, please. Don't stop me. I'm a man, I'm a woman on a mission. Okay. So where you are going from here, I pray and declare and decree you shall not be delayed on the way. If there is any man or any woman on the way, I don't care he works in what office, which office doing what. You shall not be delayed. Ah, 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 ah. <laughs> ah. Give me a letter. This letter is not for me, it is for the kings. Authorities powers and rulers and governors that are there. Because in as much as all of you would want to build, there are ministries out there. Institutions out there. 
Sometimes they would want you to follow unnecessary procedures. And they'll put you on a waiting list. I don't know why they call it waiting list. And yet the stand is already there. The stand is already there. But they put you on a waiting. There is a letter tonight. There is a letter tonight that deals with every spirit of delay. He said, give me a letter. Sit down, sit down. Sit down. Give me a letter. He said, give me a letter. Remember, I, I talked about the spirit of Jezebel, how it manipulates documents. Remember? <laughs> Do you know it's amazing that even if you apply for a British visa, okay, there are requirements. There are things that they would say, produce this, produce this, produce this, before they can give you a visa. And what is needed for the visa application, it is no longer a mystery. It's already known. Okay? It's already the information. That information is available. It's already what is needed for the visa. What they need for the visa, for them to give you a visa. It's already known. You don't have to pray about it and ask God. They, it's already, there is a list of things that you have to present. Okay? Now, they want to know how much do you have in your bank account? Not by word of mouth. They need proof, a document. Let's have a statement from the bank. How much do you have? And these are the British people now. They are saying, we can't afford to have a person coming here. We want to know how much are you going to spend here? Are you going to add to what we have or you're coming to subtract? Are you in addition? No, you see, you see, you see, you see, you see why? You see, this earth was created by your God, including Britain. Yeah. Are we together? Yeah. But they are kings. They are princesses there. There is a system that will have to stop you at some point. People that are there to make your passage difficult. I'm ready to go, but I need a letter. Though the hand of God was upon this man, and yet a letter was still needed. Yeah. Sit down, let me show you something. 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 Ah. You see, they will say, okay, how about properties? Do you have properties here? They want to know whether you are going to come back. <laughs> do you have properties? You say, yes, I, I do have properties. You have properties? Yes, I do have properties. Proof. Let's have the deeds. Letters again. Let's have proof that you have a property. All that, it's not like they want to take it away from you. They want to know that whether you have reasons to come back or not. Do you have anything that you cherish in your own place, in your own country? <laughs> they are not sure whether you will come back. They want to know. The only reason why you, you have to come back is when you have something here. So do you have anything else? Cars or something? Yes, I do have cars. Let's have the books. Are you married? You say, ah, of course I'm married. This is my wife and she's even pregnant. They'll say, ah, that is not proof enough. We need a marriage certificate. Let's have another letter. <laughs> this is my wife. I can even kiss her right now. They don't care. They don't. Let's have a letter. So you see, to them, marriage doesn't exist unless and until, okay, I don't want to talk about that one. But the the, the, the problem now, when I spoke about the spirit of Jezebel, the problem is this. Even after producing everything that they, they require, still you are not sure whether you are going to get it. That's where you see demons coming in now. This was supposed to be automatic. After producing everything that you want, it was supposed to be there and there. 
But even after doing all that, they can still say, no, we are not satisfied. Ha! Huh. You are not satisfied? Yes, we are not satisfied. You can reapply. Why? So you see, even after producing everything that is needed, there is still another spirit that has to make conclusions. That has to be dealt with. Because there are people like that, after having done everything, the money is there, everything has been bought, the bricks, the cement, and everything. But for them to start working on the site. Which means, apart from the documents, there is a force somewhere. That's why I said the spirit of Jezebel, it's a spirit that manipulates documents. It's a very simple thing. There is a place being opened over there and people are making applications and you have enough money to buy that piece of land. It takes you years. So if you have managed to give them everything they need and they are, saying, they are still saying no, it means there is yet another force making decisions. Apart from what you have and your abilities and when you would want to do it, there is a force that has to be addressed which specializes in just delaying you. Hello? Yes. Hello? Yes. <laughs> And he said, and another letter <laughs> addressed to the king Asaph or the keeper of the field by the name Asaph. There is a forest where I can get timber from. And the man in charge there is called Asaph. Write a letter to him so that he gives me timber. For me to keep the two years that I've given you or the three years or the ten years that I've given you, let me have safe passage number one because that's where most people are being delayed. Number two, I need capital. Let me have a letter so that when I go out there, all the materials are at my disposal. I don't want to start working on a building and then I stop somewhere because of lack of this and lack of that. Let me have a, a letter to the keeper of the forest. <laughs> and exactly these are two things that are stopping you from building. You are delayed in two areas. Safe passage <laughs> and access to resources. What you need to have is an established business. Business is something that you find even at the center of God's mind. God is a business person. God is a business person. He's business minded. Ha! He's a God of profit and interest. God believes in increase. He believes in multiplication. He's a business person. If you are a child of God, you should behave like, a, like your father. Be business minded. Hello? 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 I heard some people say, you know, the problem with some of these guys, they run churches as businesses. That's why their churches are moving. Yeah. Oh, yeah.
If you don't run the church as a business, that is why there is no profit in your church. It is a business. Jesus was left in Jerusalem at the Passover. When they came back three days later, he said, don't you know that I'm supposed to be doing my father's business? It was a church business. Hello. Yeah. What is the most common chapter in the Bible that you know? The most common. Yeah, that's it. John 1? John 3, 16. What does it say? For God so loved the world huh? that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal. For God so loved the loving aspect that is the vision that's a vision that is God's vision he loved the world that was his business proposal I'm going to love the world he loved the world that he gave that's capital and he gave Jesus That whosoever believe, whosoever, those are the customers. Whosoever believes in the product should not perish but have eternal. That's profit, eternal life. That's interest, eternal life. That is gain. He's a business minded God. Sit down, sit down. Let me, let me show you something. Let me show you something. Let me show you something. If you are not business minded, it's a sure sign that you are not a child of God. A child of God, when you become a child of God, like father, like son, you think like your father, you act like your father. You reason like your father. You build like your father. Let me show you something that will, that will even shock you. Something that will even, do you know that when God starts prospering you, <laughs> apart from other spiritual blessings that you can't really handle land becomes number one it's rated as one of the greatest gifts that can ever be given to a person and that was the first present that was given to men first present first present even before Adam was given Eve he was given land that was the first gift. He was given the garden before Eve. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Why was he given land? Look at God. Do you know that God He's a, he's a property owner. And if you are to count even the number of his properties, just count everything. It was constructed by God. He's the master architect, greatest strategist. If you look at yourself, the Bible says you are fearfully and wonderfully mad. All the people that you see, if we have 8 billion people now on this planet, 
all those 8 billion people that you see, all those 8 billion people, those are structures. Those are buildings that God himself built. And he sent you there as a tenant. You are renting now in that body. He has got 8 billion houses now. And all of them are occupied by people. He, look at him. Because you are not, you are not different from the house that you want to build. Look at that, look, look at those bricks. Okay, this is mortar. This is, this is sand. This is the dust of the ground. This is exactly where you came from. When God wanted to build a house, the first house that he gave you, the one that you possess now, okay? Okay, the first house that you got from God. He took you from the ground. You were delivered from the ground. Which means your body was taken from a territory. Which means your body should be a territorial personality. No, 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 no. God extracted you out of the ground. You were, you were not even there physically. You are one of those projects that God accomplished. Erected you. Now you are a mobile structure. Coming out of the ground. And he said, for your spirit to have a physical dwelling, let me help you. So I will create the physical body for your spirit. Because your spirit can't build the physical body like the way I can do it myself. Let me help your spirit. And he constructed a physical structure and said, now you can enter, possess. But for your physical body also to enter into a physical structure, I've given that grace to your physical body. You have to copy it from me. Do it the same way I did it. When you build, you have to build a house which is wonderfully and fearfully made. There has to be a wonder and fear in the structure. The house that you are going to build, you. Iwewe, Iwewe. Inenge ishitu kushamisa, you go to kushkisa no kusaitu. As father, a son. Look at this. All the people that we see now, all of us, we have come under a building. Some are under the tent, right? We are under a structure, under a building. But being under a building, we are also inside of buildings. Right? Are we together? Do you know that still this same house that you possess is able to produce another house? It has to. This physical body has to produce another physical body. If you fail to do that, it is called barrenness. One house that you build, within it, there is enough ability to produce another one. If it is properly managed, Inside of every tree, there was a seed for the next generation. In everything that God created, there was a seed that was deposited into it 
for multiplication purposes. Now, here is where we have a demon working on people. In the word of God, I've been looking from the book of Genesis up to the last book of the Bible, trying to really find a place where you can see God's time. It's amazing sometimes how we preach sermons like God is not controlled by time. God is not affected by time. God is outside of time. And then we forget and we come back and we talk about God's time. Now let me, let me explain some, some few things to you. Because if I don't deal with that one, yeah. we have people again delaying themselves thinking that they are waiting for God's time. amazing just look at that isn't it amazing it's already not everything that you are going through now and the people that are delaying you and fighting you and stopping your papers from coming out and so on it is already known in the bible there are kings beyond the river before you can finally arrive at your stand you have to pass through principalities Tonight, a prophetic letter is given to you in Jesus' name. You shall have safe passage. Now, let me, let me explain some, some few things to you. Because if I don't deal with that one, we have people again delaying themselves, thinking that they are waiting for God's time. <laughs> because when you try to do something and it's not working there is a tendency of thinking that maybe it is not God's time so let me wait for God's time okay okay it's one of those things that delay people. Let me work with that one. Let's see whether it is really God's time or something is wrong with you. Let's, let's, let's look at it. Let's look at it. God's time. God's time. God's time. God's time. You see, when you continue hearing something for a very long time, you end up believing it. I want, to throw, I want to throw something there. Are you sure you can catch it? Yes. Ah. <laughs> I read throughout the entire Bible. Listen to me. There are places, yes, in the word of God where you find statements like at the appointed time. You find sentences like at the set time. You find statements like at the fullness of time. There are those like at the appointment. 
appointed time, like when, when the angel of God came to Abraham, he said, next year, by this time, at the time appointed, you shall have a son. Okay. So I'm agreeing with you, and at the same time disagreeing with you. It is true that there is a specific time that has been set by God for you to realize certain things and not for certain things to happen. There is a set time that God has put into place and that is what you call God's time. God's time. You call God's time. God's time. Look, look, listen to this. Listen to this. At the time appointed, A psalmist once said, you shall arise, O God, and favor Zion, for her time has come. Yeah, her set time has come. And that's what we call God's time. Her set time. Psalm 102, verse number 13. I'm just giving you some of those examples. Why people end up thinking that there is God's time. Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her. Yeah, the set time is come. Which means God, arise and have mercy upon Zion for it is now time for you to favor her because it is now the set time or the appointed time. And when you look at a scripture like that, then you would think, so this is God's time. I want to deal with that thing that is delaying you. We're talking about the time factor here. The thing that is delaying you, because some of you, you are thinking, why you don't have it now? It's because you have been convinced by preachers, teachers, even by yourself, that there is a proper time that you have to wait for before you can have your own house. So what you're waiting for now, some of you here, is time. And in this case, God's time. Wait for God. Wait for God. Wait for God. Wait for God. Okay. Let's deal with it. Let's deal with it. Because I've seen people, please, listen to me. I've seen people. <laughs> I've seen people from a very young age until they died waiting for God's time. So now, what am I saying? That is very true to a certain degree. There is a time that is appointed that you can find. I can give you scriptures and scriptures. I will give you some of the scriptures. Scriptures and scriptures and scriptures. that are there to prove that there is such a thing as the fullness of time. I agree. I agree. I will tell you where I disagree. I agree with that one. Really, there is a time that God has put into place for certain things and you think for certain things to happen, but I would say for certain things to be realized. There's a time that God has set. But you know, if you read, there are certain scriptures that we read, but we don't wait to even think and to reason what the Holy Spirit is talking about. The Bible says, what eye has not seen, nor ear had, nor entered into the hearts of people, this is what God has, not shall, has prepared. What you have no, never seen, it has never entered into your eyes. Not what God shall prepare, but what God has already prepared. And you are yet to see it. And when you see it now, you would think it is now God's time for me to see it. Okay, let me give you a very strong illustration. That one... I, 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 
I intentionally chose a sensitive illustration so that you won't forget. <laughs> what is the time now? What is the time? Sorry? 20 to 7. Okay. 20 to 7. And today it is a Tuesday. Okay. What year is this? 2014. But it's 20 to what? Okay. Do you know there is a time <laughs> that when a child is born and you celebrate, you say, ah, God has given us a, a baby girl. For sure, God has given you a baby girl. Which means she's a female. She's not yet a wife. She's not yet a mother. But she's a female. She's a girl. There is within herself the ability to receive a seed and to work on it and to bring it out again. And yet there is a time that when she is to receive that seed, there is no conception. There is a certain age that during that time when she is to come into any physical contact with another person of a different sex and she is receiving a seed from him. She is never going to get pregnant. So she's receiving a seed at exactly 20 to 7 on a Tuesday, 2014. But she can't conceive. Not far away from that place, just ne next door, there is a mature woman. At the same time that is receiving seed, And she conceives. It is 20 to 7 over here. And it is 20 to 7 over there. Over there, there is no conception. Over there, there is conception. So can we say 20 to 7, according to God, is not time for conception? Now. 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 Let me, let me show you something. It is the same time. Because some of you, you are waiting for God's time and you have another person next door working on a project. It is the same time, 20 to 7. Okay, this is the problem now. Which means when God set a time for conception, it wasn't within your own understanding of time. It wasn't quarter to twelve, it wasn't quarter to one, it wasn't quarter to three. No, the time that God sets, it is called maturity time. So now you look at her, she cannot conceive at this particular moment. <laughs> Not because she's buried, no. But there is a specific time. So what is stopping her now from conceiving? It is not just the time. It is the maturity.
Her body at this point cannot even recognize what this is. Her body at that stage is not yet educated. Mumira usati waenda kuchikoro. Mwanasika na asata kuzi ya kuti chapi chapinda mudumbi chichi. Chi. It becomes just like west. Why? Because there are no signals. The body is not yet sensitive to that material. But she has to grow. When she matures on another Tuesday, same time 20 to 7, it becomes like an appointed time. But it wasn't really about time, it was about maturity. So if we come to you and we give you a sermon like that, sit down, let me show you. If we give you a sermon like that, it's a very accurate and correct sermon. That there is such a thing as God is time, God is time. But it's a sermon to babies. Okay? When we look at you and we realize that we can't do anything else again to help your faith. Your faith is still little. <laughs> you are not growing because sometimes we're not even feeding you with the right food. We're not giving you the word of God. We keep on encouraging you to wait for God's time until you die. The message that I'm preaching today it was already in existence. Already prepared. But maybe I wasn't mature enough like that little girl to conceive it. So I had to wait for a time that I thought was God's time. And yet it was time for my own maturity. Even if I had received it then, there were no people to understand it. So you also had to wait for what you call God's time. And yet it was time for your own maturity. What is making sense to you now? Invite other people. <laughs> Invite other people and say, come and hear, come and hear. <laughs> After the service, we we'll ask you, so what was happening? I didn't even understand. Now, look at this. If we say, God is time, God is time, every time and we say God is time, God is time, God is time. We are depriving people. People that should start working on their maturity. Develop themselves. Because some of them, they are actually living during the time when things are supposed to be happening. And it is that same time when you find them still waiting for another time. Do you know in Genesis chapter number three, after man, do you, <laughs> look at this. Adam took of that tree, the forbidden tree, when he ate it, sin entered. And then he realized that he was naked. And both of them were naked. Started running away from the presence of God. It wasn't the following day. That very moment when they ate, sin entered. Which means fallen nature started taking its toes on them. Life became 
difficult. It was supposed to be after that moment. <laughs> In chapter 3 of the book of Genesis, if you look at verse number 21, God went into the forest, sacrificed an animal, took the skin, came back and covered both of them. And that sacrifice was the picture of Jesus. Right? This is the only covering that can be given to, 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 to a fallen person. You need a sacrifice. Blood is needed for the covering of humanity. But instead of verse 21, that's where we were supposed to have Galatians chapter 4 verse 4. There was no need for God to go and kill another innocent animal. In that same place, there was supposed to be Jesus crucified. But when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his son. Which means, look at this. We are seeing Jesus coming thousands of years later after man had fallen. When Adam sinned, the day he sinned, he was in need of Jesus the same day. Jesus was supposed to come the same day and die for Adam. And all of us were supposed to have been born when everything was right. But because man was never going to understand the importance of the sacrifice, he wasn't mature enough to receive and to conceive that seed. That's why God said, okay, let me wait for another time that has to be fulfilled. It is not actually the fulfillment of time, but people were now ready and tired of seeing. They were now ready for the Messiah to come. Why the fullness of time? So when you look at it, you will think, remember the same Jesus was also slain. He's a lamb that was slain before the foundations of the earth. Okay? <laughs> After Adam sinned, the following day or the same day, Jesus was supposed to come down and be crucified and deal with the fallen nature. But he allowed you to go for years, thousands of years, experiencing the difficulties so that you would appreciate the sacrifice. Because God himself, when he looks at you, he knows your problem. Your problem is that you can never appreciate a miracle unless you start going through a problem first. That's, 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 that's God. That's God. If he heals you now, you give a testimony. If he gives you health, you don't testify. You see, we have elevated healing above health. So God allows you to get sick so that when he heals you, you appreciate because you have gone through some challenges and some pain. But if he gives you health, because health is superior to healing because healing you have to get sick first and then recover that's healing but health <laughs> you remain intact but there's a temptation that you will never testify that's why Jesus never came in verse 21 of the book of Genesis chapter 3 you were supposed to go through the process and realize how difficult it is to live under sin You were never going to appreciate the sacrifice of Jesus. So God was waiting for the fulfillment of time. Not really time, but your maturity. Are you tired of this? Are you ready for the Messiah? Are you ready for the blood? When it was time for people now, and they were crying in darkness, 
and God said, now time has been fulfilled. It's not really about time. People were not ready for the Messiah. Because if all of us would want to appreciate God for health, <laughs> we're going to be here for the next five years. But some of us, if you see a person say, I want to testify, I want to say he was sick. So God knows, God knows what he's dealing with. He knows what he's dealing with. He knows what he's dealing with. So you go through scriptures, you find appointed time, the fullness of time, okay? The set time. And you would think, okay, so it was time. This was God's time. This was God's time. Remember, even when God said in chapter 15 of the, of the book of Genesis, talking to Abraham, and he said, your children shall be in slavery for 400 years, right? And Moses came when it was time for them to be delivered. You see that in the book of Acts chapter 7, when, when Stephen was giving his last sermon. He was explaining and narrating what transpired when Israel was coming out of Egypt. Even before they came out, Moses appeared before them. He delivered an Israelite from an Egyptian. And the following day, he came back again trying to deliver another Israelite from another Israelite. And they said, who made you a judge over us? You want to kill me like you killed the other Egyptian? And because of those words, if you read it in, 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 in chapter 7 of the, of the book of Acts, the Bible says, For Moses thought that they would understand that through his hand he would come and deliver them. But they did not understand that. So he fled. And he was away for 40 years. As he was outside of Egypt for 40 years, they were suffering for the next 40 years. As he was outside of Egypt for 40 years, they were suffering for the next 40 years. Why? Because at the time of their deliverance, they were not yet mature for deliverance. Your time for deliverance has already expired. You're supposed to be out of that situation by now. they waste time criticizing the person that God has sent to deliver them. And they continue suffering for the next 40 years. Moses, imagine, Moses said, I thought they would understand that it was going to be through me that these people would be delivered. But they did not understand. Even the 400 years, they were not supposed to be there for 400 years. God was measuring their speed in terms of growth. The person who was actually supposed to deliver them was Joseph. He's the one who brought them there. Even the 400, it wasn't, it wasn't God's time. It was their own time. That is why there are certain vegetables that you can grow, you can put them into your garden and you wait for months. Five months, three months, two months. And you can change, put it into, into a different environment. One week. You see vegetables. Hello? Yes. Hello? Some of you, you are too slow to, 
the way you are growing is too slow. You shouldn't have been listening to any other thing by now. It was supposed to be DVD after DVD after DVD after DVD. Going through the teachings. <laughs> Look at this. Look at this. You, you see, there are people now that are waiting maybe for the economic boom. Sit down. Sit down. Let me wait for that once, once I see that happening then. But you know that as you are waiting, there is something happening next door. <laughs> next door in the same territory. Hey. So, maturity is the subject. You look at the book of Galatians, the same chapter, chapter 4, from verse 1. You see that an heir, as long as he is still a child, though he is Lord over all, he differeth not from a slave. The same chapter we have read about the fullness of time. And then you will see that he remains a slave until the time appointed of the father. That's what you will call God's time. Now I say that the heir, who is an heir? Talk to me. Who is an heir? Huh? Sorry? Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, immature, differeth nothing. There is no difference. There is no difference. You look at, a, at an heir. <laughs> there is the Bible here is saying there is no difference between a slave or a servant and an heir. There is no. All of them are renting. All of them are broke. All of them, they have to wait for salary. It's a servant mentality, living on a salary. Money was supposed to be realized the day you offer service. Not at the end of the month. That mentality is not for 2014. It is for during slave trade. A reward should be realized at the point of offering service. When you finish and the person is satisfied, money has to be retrieved from the person. Look at this. Look at this. Differeth nothing. So there's no difference between the heir and the servant. What is causing that similarity? Edge. Which means if, if you are a son, right? <laughs> and you are still a child. And the Bible says you differ not from a servant because of immaturity. It means also what makes servants servants. It is immaturity as well. There are things that we have to revisit. Ways that we have to change. There are certain ways that we have to change. I don't know who came up with a name like civil servants. I don't know. 
There is a servant there. We are trying to find what is delaying people. <laughs> Look at this. He differeth nothing from a servant. Though he be Lord of all. He is Lord of all. He's the owner of everything, but there's no difference. If you look at him, there's no difference. What is causing all that, it is age. That's why the king is concerned about time. He's saying, how, how fast are you going to do that, Nehemiah? Give me time and I will allow you to go. Without time, you stay here. Why? Because time is very important. Can you do it fast enough? Do you have the energy? Do you still have time to waste? Next it is. But he is under tutors. <laughs> and governors until the time appointed of the father. The time appointed there. <laughs> My God. He is under, under tutors, under tutors. A tutor, go and do a research. A tutor, this is a person. You get a piece of land, okay? <laughs> and the person who is supposed to own it is not yet mature. You surrender it to tutors or a curator. He keeps the property. He's in charge of the household. That's the name there. He will be in charge of the household. He possesses the house until the rightful owner matures. And he has to get out of that house. As long as the heir is still immature, they keep on living in those beautiful houses and you are renting in other, in other small houses. Yeah. They are there, you can't pray them out. Only maturity can deliver your house from them. They have been placed there by God to keep it until you mature. Why? Because, because you, some of you would say, ah, so why is God giving it to them? And yet they are not mature. God doesn't care. If, if it kills them, he doesn't care. But because he loves you, he wouldn't want you to enter into any danger. You would rather give it to somebody who is immature. Let them die as a result of all that prosperity. But as for you, God is saying, until you mature, you can't inherit it. So, the tutor and the governor, they are going to keep it until the time appointed. The time appointed there is not on a Friday. The time appointed there, it's not in next year, February. It's a maturity period. Right now, some of you might have bought houses for your children, but up to now, you have not yet surrendered the house to them. Why? Because they are not yet, you are waiting for an appointed time. But the appointed time is not really time. You are waiting for maturity to manifest before you can hand over the house to her. To her. Appointed time there, it's not even like an event that okay, I'll give I'll give him this house uh, at the wedding. Manong jumpa. I know we get out, I know we get I'm coming in a chipbag. I have a new Razed JC. Where I'm coming. Great seven. That's a good word. Even when I was in the mood, don't pop a chat. I won't pop my pop. Because he knows time appointed. We are going to be in the mood. I won't 
until the time appointed of the father. The father there is the owner. The one in charge. He appoints a specific time. As long as the air is still immature, they keep on living in those beautiful houses and you are renting in other, in other small houses. Yeah. They are there. You can't pray them out. Only maturity can deliver your house from them. They have been placed there by God to keep it until you mature. Why? Because, because you, some of you would say, ah, so why is God giving it to them? And yet they are not mature. God doesn't care. If, if it kills them, he doesn't care. But because he loves you, you wouldn't want you to enter into any danger. You would rather give it to somebody who is immature. Let them die as a result of all that prosperity. But as for you, God is saying, until you mature, you can't inherit it. Until the time appointed of the father, the father there is the owner, the one in charge. He appoints a specific time. And he says, unless you show signs of maturity, I will not give it to you. I will not give it to you. I will not give it to you. Show signs of maturity. Time. Waiting for God's time. Waiting for God's time. There is no need for a person. If a person is sick today, I don't see any reason why the person should wait for tomorrow. If the person who was sick for five years come into church and all of a sudden you pray for the person receives a miracle. It wasn't God's time that he was waiting for. Healing was waiting for his maturity. There are things that are already given. Though you, you, you are Lord over all. You have everything. Healing, miracles, anything that you can think of. You are Lord over everything, but for it to be given to you, there has to be maturity. There has to be maturity. You have taken so much from the other world, and now you believe the devil more than you believe God. What you're taking in now is just like when you feel pain in your body. When there is pain in your body. Because I've seen people doing that. They try everything. Run from this place to another. Trying to get rid of the devil that they have swallowed. There's a devil inside and they know there's a devil. They're looking for a place where they can get delivered. Hmm. You have hundreds and hundreds of men of God laying their hands on you. But still, you differ not from a servant. Because I've never seen any kind of maturity that comes as a result of laying one of your hands. I'm here to see that one. Maturity. <laughs> if you want to mature, 
eat the right food. Eat the right food. Look at this. When pain enters into your body, look at this. To get rid of that pain, you don't do like this. Mm. Let, let, me, let me try to push it out. You don't. All the methods, if you try to put pressure on your body, still the pain will not leave. What you can do, <laughs> if the pain is inside, you have to swallow something that goes also inside. You swallow medication. And the moment medication enters, pain leaves. So pain will remain there until something drops. Pain is there, waiting for medication to come. And pain is saying, once I see, once I see medication coming, I, 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 I have to go. That's exactly how you deal with the devil. He's inside. You, you will never be free from the devil until information gets in. Yeah. It is the information that you receive that will chase out the devil. The devil cannot withstand wisdom. He cannot withstand sound teaching. But prayer, he can, he can withstand. Prayer, anointing. He stands, the devil himself, he appears in the presence of God. He can appear and stand there and be answering questions, conversing with God. What anointing are you talking about? You will never get rid of the devil. What frustrates him? He can never share the same accommodation with information. The word of God. I was sharing the word of God some other time with my wife here and I was talking about what the scripture says and when the scripture says, when the son of man sets you free, you are free indeed. So, we we're enjoying the word of God. I was saying, look at this. You see the Bible saying, when the son of man sets you free, you are free indeed. And I said to her, there is a free with a surname called Indeed. Which means there are other frees which are not Indeed. Listen to me. They are, listen to me. Listen to me. Get this. <laughs> if I, listen to me, I can do that. You know that that power is available. If we are going to spend the whole night delivering people here, we are setting people free, but not Indeed. Listen, if you hear the Bible say, if, it's a condition there, or when the Son of Man sets you free, you are free indeed. Indeed. Why indeed? Which means so many things that we look at and we think it's deliverance. It's never deliverance. You will still see the same people. There is no difference between them and servants. Hello? Hello, 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 hello. <laughs> if you go back and you read, do you know the Bible says there, and Stephen did wonders and miracles, outstanding ones before the people. But there came a time, the Bible says, when they could not withstand his wisdom and his speech. And it was because of his teachings that they killed him. Not miracles. They were never irritated by his miracles. It's there. They could not withstand the power of his speech. When he speaks, after doing miracles, after healing the sick, after, after raising the dead, after deliverance, casting out demons, 
they were enjoying all that. But the moment he started getting into teaching, they could not withstand. It was too powerful more than any kind of a miracle. They said, we can't have this. So that tells you what the devil fears the most. Teaching information, that's the medicine that you require. Is it because we can't do miracles? Name it. Not the two meter miracle or the I was telling some pastors some few days ago that you read your Bible carefully, you see every time when Paul got an opportunity, he got an opportunity to stand before Festus. He got an opportunity to, to stand before Felix, an opportunity to stand before Augustus, before Agrippa. Every time when Paul got an opportunity to stand, they would ask him to speak and not to do a miracle. They would say, we want to hear. Why? Because all those people were kings. Because hearing is for kings. And deliverance is for servants. Do you know that a sure sign that most of us, most of us, or even most, not most of you, in fact, most of them, <laughs> when you always feel like you need deliverance it's a sure sign that you are a slave you are in bondage that's true you need deliverance it's not a lie if you always feel like you have a demon it's a sure sign that you are still in captivity and I gave them a scripture that says for a very long time, Israel had no teaching priest. And because of that, there was no peace in Israel. There was great vexation. <laughs> because there was no teaching priest in Israel. So there was no peace. And there was a great vexation. on I vex what? Can you see it? For how long? It's time, you see time there? For a very long season. <laughs> Why people were broke for a very long time? Even 50 years after they got born again. For a very long season, people were broke. Why? Because there was no deliverance priest. Professor and priest. There was no teaching priest and without law. There was no teaching priest and without law. Go to verse 4, verse 5. You see what happens when there's no teaching priest. In those times, there was no peace to him that went out, nor to him that came in, but great vexations were upon all the inhabitants of the countries. People were suffering. Can you imagine that all those people that were suffering and dying, it was all because of teaching ministry. Simple. The absence of a teaching priest. That's why there was, there was chaos. So you see what brings free indeed. You see it? Yes. What sets you apart? It is the amount of information that you have taken in. When I look at you now, you now know too much to be broke. Yeah. 
I saw something very interesting one day. A documentary. I saw a bed which is called by a weaver bed or a weaver bed. Bakakura Gumusha, I think we call that one Majesa. And the Jesa. What it does is that when it feels that it is now time to get a partner. <laughs> The male weaver bed, instead of looking for a wife, it goes into the forest. And it gets a stand. It has to, it has to find a strategic place where it is going to build the nest. It is not the wife that builds. It is the husband. And when it finds a place, you see that most of the nests that you see, like even in most of the places, you would see them hanging on top of water like that. Normally those nests are far at the end of the branch. So it has to find a place for the beautiful wife that is coming. And why the nest has to be in such a place, hanging like that camera there? It is for security reasons. No trespassers. Okay. It is protection. You have to protect what you love from other dangerous animals. So the house has to be placed at a place whereby when the enemy looks at it, he fears for his life. He would rather go for other prey, not this one. So this male weaver bed, buy a weaver bed. He's working for about 18 days. And they say he can travel more than 500 times to and fro before he can finish. So he's building a house. At this point, he is still a bachelor. Not yet proposed. Okay? So when he finishes building, there is a set time for the women to come and inspect. So they come in their numbers. So normally when you see the male uh, birds building nests, you see nests everywhere. There is a time when then the ladies will say, okay, now let's go and inspect. So they would come. So when you see female weaver beds coming now. They are coming to inspect not just the husband, but what the husband can do. Now, uh, <laughs> why are they coming? There is this edge within themselves. Something is telling them it is time for marriage, but you can't just be married by whosoever. No, 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 no. So they are coming, right, to see the house. Because in as far as the wife is concerned, marriage, according to her, is not all about what you can do with me or what you can do at me. 
But it is also about what you can do for me. So, so, so they are there. That one that you see working there, that's the male. Now when, when, when everything is done, there is a part that the male has to leave for the wife to finish. It is the interior. Okay, let me, let me, let me. Let me, let me show you something. Let me show you something. Let me show you something. So when, when, when the husband now sees that these women are now coming, then they have to start demonstrating their other abilities. It has to start acting in order to promise. <laughs> so it will start acting in a very romantic way. But in as much as you are romantic, stick to your house, stick to your nest. It doesn't matter how romantic you are. Women are not just looking at you. They don't, no, no, no. They are looking at what you can do. So you see the husband dancing on top of the nest. And then, to her, romance, it is another qualification. We see that later because it's not about what you can, how you can, and so on, but the venue, we, 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 the place, the place. You will have other male with a beds missing their marriage appointment because of the ugly structure. <laughs> Women are all over there, but they are saying, where? <laughs> so when she looks at your project and she looks at you, a loving husband, very responsible, and she looks at the Location, is there enough security for me there? Am I not exposed to other dangers? She considers all that before she can say, I love you too. So, so you can see now, some of us, we need to start appreciating God because you can imagine if we were a, a part of them up to now, we would have been bachelors up to now. You can, so, so you see, this is why sometimes we have to thank God that you are not a weaver bed. That you are not a weaver bed. But let's look at it, let's look at it. Let's look at it. So you see the husband, he's there protecting his territory. So the wife then comes, looks at the husband, he looks at the house, she gets inside. Now, before the husband gets married, there is an opening that has to be left. So that the wife comes in and she inspects. She looks at the outside. But the inside, the cushioning, the decorations, the furniture, it is the wife who determines. Do you know sometimes, that's why you see some of those nests, you look at it, it was very new, but you see it broken. When a husband goes as far as finishing everything and is not concerned about the taste of the wife, and the husband is buying the sofa, the husband is buying the chairs, the husband is, bu is buying the plates, she will come and destroy the nest 
and say, wait for the next season until you know what to do. We also have our own choices in your house. So the, the male has to remain there on the nest until the wife comes. And what happens actually is that you have to get a wife as long as your nest is still green. When it dries up and it is now changing color, you have to destroy it yourself and build another one. She needs a new place. Okay, okay. Now, if you don't want me to talk about houses, how about these other creatures? Where are they getting all this from? Actually, there's a scripture in Bible, not you and Simba and Dagumujuru. Kaunamara who refer to Nukumuka, Zemsango, and I'm not Zizza, all no, Sunita Muka Zemsango. Australia. That one is really much serious. That one, <laughs> you see, when it is building a nest, it is down here. There has to be a foundation. It puts a foundation. There are pillars on the nest. And when it finishes building the nest, it goes into the streets. It will pick up coins, silver. Anything that glitters, it will then come in and properly lay the floor. You see bottle tops in there. And they love the color blue. Anything blue, he picks it, brings it in there. In that nest, they are never going to stay there forever. The wife is never going to, 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 to lay the eggs in that. No. No, it's a bachelor's place. It's a place of showing your ability. And when it finishes, do you know that it even plasters the wall and paints the wall? It goes into the forest and it chews some berries. It comes back and it's vomiting on the wall, plastering and painting the wall. So when it is time now for the wife to come, the husband will be there. He's the one doing the modeling, not the wife, the husband. Can you imagine? The wife is coming in there. There is a lot of Glittering, there is jewelry, there is everything. Sakagaguzaudi matzima arguzuiti za kudamisha enundi ana kaguzaudi arguzuiti za. Agaguzaudi wakat matzima ano zuiti za kudamisha ena kaguzaudi ndugu kuzashiri iriku nongere wama botore e koko kora iriku nongere wa iriku iriku isi wa zino pukinya apa. Plastered house. And you hear people now. Dogo knows Gawan, Zara, Panda, and the Trumbo Zigan, why you were. Topar is a Yaga, I saw ye. No, I seen the Panapar is a Yazagadaro, Jesu, I see you. I was just a part of some change you go and sold. Tarisa, Papa. Tarisa, you must see what I got feel when I Jesu is to sell. You see, you see that place? I told you that she doesn't come to lay eggs there. 
It's a place just where it has to pass. Entering into marriage. Then they will go and build the actual house. Kana makonzai ne mwe na unawaka imba ya kuchete iwe.